Right guys, I'm sitting here on my new property. I'm planning for my, uh, I don't know, my soon to happen lawn renovation out here. One of the very first things I need to do is figure out soil pH. This is one of the most fundamental and the most important thing in my opinion that you could do for your lawn. Know what your soil pH is. Yeah, your grass needs water. Yeah, you need to mow it. But you know what? If you're gonna do anything to your lawn, soil pH makes a difference. What I'm gonna be doing for you here today is doing the DIY test, the one where you don't need to buy anything, the one where you don't need to have a kit or go to a lab or do anything. This is just like dig a hole in your backyard, use stuff that you already have in your house, and you get a ballpark estimate of your soil pH. This is not gonna give you a numerical value, you're not going to look at this and say, oh, my soil pH is 6.3 or my soil pH is 7.5. You're not going to get that. You're going to get a ballpark estimate using your eyes. You're going to look at it and you're going to be like, oh, okay, that's pretty acid or whoa, that's like really basic. You might think, eh, I guess it's neutral. And that's good enough. That's really good enough. Now here's the main lawn. Obviously this needs uh, a heavy renovation, but I'm gonna start over here on the side lawn. Now I've identified gas lines in the lawn and we've got some Bermuda here that's going dormant, it's kind of brown. This whole area here is predominantly Kikuyu grass. The neighbor has the same grass type. So I'm gonna kill everything off here and regrow it, but I wanna know the soil pH. Now only a few days ago, I dug some holes here to take some soil for my soil texture test. Now I did a video on that, which I only published a few days ago. I'll link to that down in the description if you, if you missed it. But the excess soil that I used for that soil texture test is what I'm going to be using for this uh, soil pH test. If you don't have soil from your lawn already, like literally just get a shovel, dig a circle, pull the circle out, and then take some of the clean dirt from the bottom of the circle and then stick the grass back on it. So here's the dirt that I pulled a couple days ago from three different sections of that area. And one of the sections was a lower profile. So we've got mostly kind of in that three inch range and a little bit of this soil is from the five to six inch range in depth. For the soil texture profile, I prefer sifting it, but for this, you don't really need to. So I'm just gonna dump it all together. I'm gonna pull these little roots out here. probably don't need this piece of styrofoam. So this is kind of dried out a bit and that's fine. I'm just gonna pull the bigger chunks of obvious not dirt out. All right, now the best way to do this, I like to sit down, is to get yourself two bowls. Be prepared to make two slurries of mud, just basically uh, muddy water. But the thing is, you don't really want to use regular water. You want to use distilled water. And the reason for that is distilled water uh, is pH neutral. You could use your tap water or your garden hose water. Uh, but unless you know if that water is neutral, then I don't know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect things. So we don't want roots or sticks or rocks. And if there's any large chunks, you can kind of squish it, but it's not that big of a deal. So long as your dirt is mostly powdery, this will work just fine. So what I do is just throw it in here. Like literally, this is not complicated and it does not have to take you hours. You don't have to be precise. You just do whatever you can to get the job done. Remember, we're not doing a real pH test here to find out exactly what our pH is. We're just finding out where our pH zone is. It only takes a few minutes. So here I'm gonna get my distilled water and I'm gonna pour it in. I'm gonna get my spoon. I'm gonna get that root. I'm just gonna kind of mix it up a little bit. I actually might have a little bit too much water in here. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take some white vinegar. White vinegar, obviously, is acidic. And when we pour the white vinegar in here, 
If this is acidic, you're not going to see anything. But if this dirt is alkaline, then it's going to start fizzing up a little bit. If it's extremely alkaline, then it's probably going to fizz a lot. If it's closer to neutral, then it's barely going to fizz at all. See that? There's some bubbles in there. So really there wasn't a lot of fizz whatsoever. So the chances are pretty good that this is not alkaline. When I poured it in, there was a little tiny bit of bubbling that happened. And I think part of that might have just been the uh, disruption, <laughs> you know, uh, fluid falling into fluid and bubbles come up. Um, but there's no real fizzing. Everybody knows what true fizzing is. So chances are very good that my soil is not alkaline. So what I'm going to do in this one is add baking soda to find out if it fizzes. Baking soda is alkaline, and if my soil is acidic, the baking soda that goes into it will cause this to fizz, and we'll know that it is an acid-based soil, or it's on the acid end of the pH spectrum. All right, using a clean spoon, not sure how important that is. I'm gonna go ahead and add some baking soda. Baking soda has a pH of eight, so if you drop this in there and the soil is acidic, then it is going to react and fizz. My baking soda is like a rock. All right, there we go. Scraped it up. Look at that, nothing happened. But when we put the vinegar into this one, there was a little bit of bubbling going on, but very little, and it went away, and I thought it was just agitation bubbles. But that kind of makes me think that my soil is barely alkaline. It's probably slightly above seven. This is definitely a ballpark estimate, but I'm gonna guess that the soil pH here is somewhere around 7.1, 7.2, which is gonna be fine for kikuyu grass and some grass types out there, but it's not optimal for grasses as a collective, I don't know, category. If I'm gonna trust those results, then I'll probably add a little tiny bit of soil sulfur here in the next like week or two in the fall so that it will pull the soil pH down into the, uh, and into the slightly acidic category uh, for next season. But if you don't want to trust those results, then you gotta actually do a real soil test. Now you can do like university soil tests over at your local extension offices or make maybe a local laboratory that will do soil tests for you. Or you can just do the simplest route in getting one of the uh, at-home soil test kits that you just mail off. So I'm also going to be doing that, but it does. It, I can't get results for that in 20 minutes time. And that's why I do this first to get myself a ballpark estimate. The soil test, I'll get like more accurate results a little bit later. So if you're curious what my soil test shows my soil pH at, then watch the video that's going to come out. Eventually I'll link to it down in the description below when it comes out. But my guess is it's going to be about 7.1 to 7.2. Purely an educated guess, but I think it's going to be pretty accurate. If you do this test yourself at home, you can probably get a pretty good idea of where you're at without doing a soil test. But I still recommend doing the soil test to get the most accurate results possible. If you do have alkaline soil in your lawn, then you probably want to lower the soil pH. So watch this video up here. This is basically the five ways that you would go about actually lowering your soil pH. Um, I made this video about a year and a half ago, and I still recommend it today.